Today, we're going to turn this into this. Well, what, what's that? You, you can't tell what's different? Well, wouldn't you like to know? I bet very much you'd like to know. You're right, Professor. We would like to know. All right, fine. I'll tell you. Hey there, how you doing? I'm Tech Dweeb. Welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. Do uh, do you like my new all black filming setup? I thought this looked pretty cool. Considering the ROG Ally X is kind of a cool black device, I figured this would be appropriate. This is as cool as I'm ever going to get, by the way. It's all downhill from here. So the ROG Ally X is amazing. We all know that. I was very positive about it in my review. I've been using it a ton. Obviously, we'll have to see how it shakes out in the long run with, you know, hardware issues and Asus warranty stuff. But my early impressions are that it's really a game changer. The huge battery in this thing changes the way that I game on it. It really brings it right up in line with how I game on the Steam Deck. And it is incredible that they managed to give us such a huge battery upgrade and other important upgrades without making this thing weigh 50 pounds. It's only a little bit more heavy than the original Ally, and it's worlds apart in terms of battery life. Uh, kind of crazy, if you think about it. Let's do that, actually. Yup, kind of crazy. But one thing that is keeping me from enjoying the Ally X as a true competitor to the Steam Deck is the system. The Ally X runs Windows by default, and sure, that may, means that you can play Windows games that you can't play on the deck, but I play literally zero of those games. And I'd much rather have SteamOS on my Ally X so that I can get all the conveniences of the Steam Deck without all of the annoyances of Windows. So that's what we're gonna do today. The way that this is done is by installing an operating system called Bazite. Bazite is a custom Linux image and it lets you run SteamOS just like the Steam Deck. And you still get access to the Linux desktop environment just like the Steam Deck. And a bunch of other cool stuff that I'll, I'll hopefully be able to show you today. I've never in installed Bazite before so this will be kind of an exploration that we'll do together. So first things first, let's go over what you need. You'll need a flash drive to hold the operating system installer. I'm using this Kingston Data Traveler flash drive. And since the Ally X only has USB-C holes, I'm going to use this USB-A to C adapter. And apparently you'll need a wired keyboard, so I have one of those handy. Now, you can install this on the SSD that comes in the Ally X. However, then you'll lose access to Windows unless you do some dual boot partition stuff. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to install Bazite onto a fresh drive. I have this 2TB NVMe drive. I think I yanked this out of a mini PC. And I've wiped it clean and deleted the partitions, so this will be perfect for us today. However, if you did want to dual boot Bazite and Windows, you can do that, and I'll link to the Bazite install guide in the doodad below. They have instructions for how to install it like that. And since we're opening the Ally X, I got a, a screwdriver. So with that out of the way, are you ready to freaking do this thing? No? Well, too bad. This is my channel and my video, and I say we're doing it. So shut up. Okay, uh, first things first, we need to prepare our Bazite install media. It's uh, really straightforward. You just need to go to the Bazite website, bazite.gg, click the download button, and then select your device. We're going to be using the ROG Ally X installer. And then you select your desktop environment, KDE for me because that's similar to the SteamOS desktop that I'm familiar with, and then click download. And then you can plug in your flash drive. I'm going to use Belena Etcher to flash the image. So just select the ISO that you downloaded and then select your drive and then flash that thick. Okay, so now that's done and I guess we're ready to open this bad boy up, which means that we need to sh shut it down. And now the uh, fun begins. We're gonna unscrew the screws, six screws around the back. And now the part I hate so much. Uh, we gotta pry this thing open. Oh man, I always hate doing this. Oh, that didn't sound good. Uh oh, I just uh, turned it on. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to do. We'll uh, just turn this back off. Uh, come on, give it to me. Give up your secrets. Uh, okay, there we go. I don't think I broke any clips. Okay, so uh, there's our drive right there. And I think all we need to do is just swap it. We'll just take out the old one and, and shove in the new one. I should probably unplug the battery, but meh, I don't care. <laughs> you should unplug your battery though if you do this. Do as I say, not as I do. 
and we'll shove the new one in there and screw it down. And uh, is that it? Yeah, I think we're done. Oh man, I hate these snaps. I, I always feel like I'm breaking something because half the time I do. And uh, there's the screws, done. Uh, so now we're ready, I think. And that should be it. So uh, now we need to boot it up while holding the volume down button. Uh, hello? It's, uh, it's not, it's not turning on. Uh-oh. Is it the drive? Oh my god, this is worrisome. Maybe I need to plug it in? Nope. No signs of life. That's, uh, that's a problem. Oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, it's turning on. <laughs> Holy jeez. Give, give, give me a freaking heart attack. I don't know what the heck that was about. Okay, okay. Uh, so we'll turn this off and plug in the drive and boot while holding the volume down button. There we go. Yeah, we're in the BIOS. So now we need to set this to boot from our uh, USB drive. That's just this boot menu down here. There's our drive, so we'll select that. And yeah, there's the options for the installer. Gonna select install Bazite from the list. I'm, I'm sorry, I know this is hard to see. It's, it's freaking tiny. And then we're in the Bazite installer. And I realized that this is also hard to see. I don't have brightness control on the ally for this part and my, my camera sucks for this, but basically you just need to select the drive that you're going to install it on and then you need to create a user. I plugged in my external keyboard for this part. I chose not to make a password though, I just put in the username. And once that's done, you can click begin installation and then it'll start installing. And a few minutes later, when that's done, you can click reboot system and unplug the drive. Now, if you get this blue screen, that means that you have secure boot enabled. Maybe you'll want the secure boot. You'll want that if you're dual booting with Windows. There is instructions in the Bazite walkthrough to uh, tell you what you need to know about dealing with this. I'm just going to boot back into the BIOS and disable secure boot. I don't need it. And then it'll do some more installing, uh, take a, a few more minutes, reboot twice, and then we're in Linux. So the guide has some info on this. Basically, you need to connect to Wi-Fi, and then this installer walkthrough thing can automatically install extra stuff like MUDEC or DOSBox or Decky Loader. I'm not interested in that today. I just want to get Bazite up and running and installed, and you can always install this stuff later just like you can on the deck. So go through this and when you're done, you'll need to log into Steam. And when that's done, you can reboot your ally and cross your fingers that everything worked. Mine rebooted to a black screen, so I had to power it right off and do a cold boot. But after that, yep, more installing. Now it needs to install SteamOS. And then after that, you'll be taken into the SteamOS setup. And then after a couple more reboots, we're in SteamOS, finally. <laughs> that, was a, that was a lot of steps in that install. All right, so post setup, this is basically SteamOS. It feels nearly exactly like the Steam Deck. I, I went through and I started installing some games. I was playing with the built-in handheld daemon by double tapping the quick settings. More on that in a bit. And all the rest is basically the same as the Steam Deck. The Steam settings, the quick access menu, it's all more or less identical to the deck. At this point, I wanted to play some games and to test some games and really put it through its paces. I installed a handful of games and I, I tried to see what the Bazite specific changes were. I played with it for like an hour. I wanted to figure it out before I gave you a uh, proper tour and my final thoughts. And I did. So now, yeah, let, let's do those things. So the short version is that it really is just SteamOS. It kind of feels just like it does on the Steam Deck, except now you're on a 1080p 120Hz VRR screen and a more powerful APU and a bigger battery. But the system itself, it feels just like the Steam Deck. As you can see, here I am downloading a bunch of games, but there's something I really want to know. I wonder if the SD card from my Steam Deck that is full of games from my deck can work on Bazite on the ROG Ally X. Oh right, I haven't even shown you this. This is a 2 terabyte micro SD card. It's the Team Group T Create Smart card. I actually intended to show you this in a different video. I was working on a video where I upgraded my Steam Deck SSD to 2 terabytes and also I added this SD card to make it a 4 terabyte deck. However, this card wasn't available yet and Team Group asked me not to show it off yet. But I just checked on Amazon and this card is, it's there now. So I guess that means that I can show you. Anyways, if you want one of these to add a, a massive uh, storage upgrade to your Steam Deck or your ROG Ally X, I'll toss a link to where you can buy this on Amazon in the doodad below. All right, so uh, let's see about this. If I go to installed right now, you can see I have eight games installed. So uh, we'll 
Let's see what happens here. Hey, there it goes. Well, we got to try one, right? Let's, uh, let's try Forza. Let's see if that works. It should, I think. Ba Bazite is Linux and so is SteamOS. Uh, it should be the same files, I think. Oh, yeah, there we go. Ha, <laughs> that's freaking awesome. Yeah, it's, it's working just fine. I mean, I'm genuinely super happy about this. All right, so uh, let's uh, continue on with the tour. As for the quick menu on the right, yeah, it's the same stuff as SteamOS. All the same tabs here, the usual stuff. You can change your brightness, Wi-Fi stuff, and you can also get your performance stuff. And you can see here that the display is running at 120 hertz, and you can enable variable refresh rate, and you can change the TDP. That's right, we have full TDP controls here. Now, the hardware, like the TDP, is actually controlled by a third-party application that is running in the background called Handheld Daemon. If you want to access that, you can double tap the quick access button and it'll, it'll pop up like this. This is Handheld Daemon. And the TDP that you set in Steam changes the TDP in here. So for example, you can see if I go to the quick settings and I set the TDP to like 12 watts. I close that and I bring up Handheld Daemon. You can see that it's set to 12 watts here too. And this is actually what's controlling the TDP, but you don't need to use Handheld Daemon. You, you can just use the Steam Deck's controls instead. But there is quite a bit more in Handheld Daemon. If you triple tap the quick access button, you'll get the full controls. And in here, you can adjust the fan curve of the Ally X. I turned down my fans a bit from the default. You can change the max charge limit to protect your battery life. And this is where you can change the RBG on the sticks. There's lots of options in there. And there's a ton of other options like swapping which controller the device is detected as, change the hardware dead zones, and lots of more advanced stuff. I'm not going to go deep into this stuff here. I, I just kind of wanted to show it to you quick. So, what do I think of Bazite, you ask? Well, I've uh, only been using it for a few hours, so maybe I'll have some revelation in the future, but my first impressions are that it's incredible. With this one little project of swapping SSDs and installing Bazite, it has fixed my main gripe with the ROG Ally X, the operating system. I have lots of more powerful handhelds than the Steam Deck, but I keep coming back to the deck for two reasons. The battery life and the fact that the system, SteamOS, is so easy to use and hassle-free that it turns PC gaming into a console-like experience. And now with Bazite, the ROG Ally X can take everything that's great about the Steam Deck and give it to us on a device with a lot more power than the deck. As far as I can tell, the performance is actually a bit better than it is on Windows. I need to do more testing. I didn't do any like controlled benchmarks, but from my performance notes that I took while I was working on my Ally X review, Today I was getting slightly better frame rates and frame pacing in Bazite than I was in Windows. However, obviously since this is Linux, the performance will kind of depend on the game. Some games will run much better, some will run similar, and a few games won't run as well. And then there are those Windows only games like Fortnite or whatever that don't run on SteamOS at all. But on the whole, it's super impressive that we can run games like this without the overhead and all those little annoyances of Windows. It's probably a bit early for me to say this, but screw it. I'm going to say it anyways because it's my video. And you're in my world now, bucko. Installing Bazite on the Ally X makes it feel like the Steam Deck too. It's all that SteamOS goodness that we love about the deck on a device that is more powerful than the deck, with a bigger battery than the deck. I am blown away. I really am. And I am excited to finish this video so that I can just play with this some more. But to play Devil's Avocado, Time will tell if that's the long-term outlook. Maybe it'll annoy me in time. Maybe it'll have glitches. I don't know. It certainly wasn't easy to install Bazite. I mean, it wasn't hard, but it wasn't like simple as pushing a few buttons. If you choose to do this, you're definitely going to want to follow the guide on the website linked below so that you don't miss any steps. But is it worth it? I think, heck yeah. Yeah, it heckin' is. And if what you saw here today intrigues you, then just, just do it. Give it a try. You can thank me later. Actually, screw that. Don't thank me. Thank the developers of Bazite. How freaking lucky are we that there are cool dweebs like these guys in the world making stuff like this for us. For free. These are the real heroes right here. But that's it. That's, that's all I have for you today. My first dip into the inviting waters of Bazite and the, the ocean of Linux gaming. And I hope that I can show you more cool stuff as I learn and discover more. But now I want to hear from you. What do you think of Bazite? Do you have an Ally X? Do you have another handheld gaming PC? Have you tried Bazite? Are you going to try Bazite? Do you have any questions? Is there anything else you want to see in future videos? Let me know any of that stuff or anything else that you want to tell me about your life in the comments below. 
But that's it from me for today. I'm Tech Dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Thank you.